The suite of bills you were describing is the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Some Republicans did support it. But do you think overall that's as far as Republicans are willing to go when it comes to gun control legislation? Well, you know, when I talk about how far Republicans are willing to go, the question is really how many Republicans who, if they can vote by secret ballot, would vote and do the right thing. The margin between in the House right now between Democrats and Republicans, four votes. So I really do believe that there are probably a dozen or more Republicans who, if they could vote by secret ballot, would vote for common sense gun reform and would vote for this study that we want the CDC to do to really look at gun violence as a public health crisis. The question is, are they going to be afraid of these big, powerful lobbies or a handful of people who are vocal? Or are they serious about public safety and protecting our children? You said that they would vote by secret ballot if they could, but they can't. So what more can Democrats do? Because um, Senator Chris Murphy this weekend said that they don't have the votes in the Senate to pass an assault weapons ban. So aside from this legislation, what else can your party do? I mean, I think this is just one of those issues that we continue to speak about. You know, I'm here in the district right now in Washington State in the 10th district, and I've been going to a lot of events and my events were about a lot of topics, but gun violence comes up in every single conversation. And I don't know if you saw the clip over this weekend, but there was a coach from Georgia Tech and he was doing a press conference and he was talking about sports, but he actually pivoted and talked about needing to take action on gun violence. He talked about having a four-year-old daughter. He was in tears. And so I think the thing that we can do as Democrats is continue to listen to the majority of the American people who want us to take action. A criticism that lawmakers receive is that calls for gun control legislation happen only immediately after a mass shooting and then they subside fairly quickly. The Nashville shooting happened less than two weeks ago and already the news cycle has shifted to President, former President Trump's arraignment. Is this legislation still a top priority for Democrats? This legislation will remain a top priority for Democrats, and you are absolutely right. We have a large, high-profile, tragic event around guns. It becomes top of the news cycle. People express their hopes and prayers and wishes and condolences, which are completely legitimate, and then it recedes out of the news cycle. And I want to remind folks, too, that the high-profile mass shootings are horrific and happen far too often to the point where we're desensitized but people die in America from gun violence every single day as well. And so there's the high profile part of it that affects children and sadly, but there's also the fact that people die from gun violence every day in America. And so again, this is a public health crisis. It needs to be treated as such. And we need to empower the Centers for Disease Control to do the research that we can have fact-based, scientific-based solutions to try and address this uniquely American problem. I was talking to your colleague, Representative Greg Landsman, last week about the Nashville shooting, and he called for an assault weapons ban, but he said that that needs to even be a step further and get um, those types of weapons out of the country. Is that something that you agree with? I mean, realistically, they should not be anywhere in the country in the hands of civilians. But I think that, you know, as a lawmaker, we have to be very intentional about where we can get wins. And so what I say to folks is, let's take the wins where we can get them. Let's pass legislation that's going to keep people safe. And then as we proceed, let's just continue to build on it. And look at the example in Australia. I don't know how long ago it was, but they had a mass shooting take place. They got rid of automatic and semi-automatic weapons, and they haven't had one since. And so we can't deny that common sense gun laws will save lives. But we have to have the courage and the conviction to ask ourselves as lawmakers, are we going to protect the American people or aren't we? Are we going to be afraid of loud, large lobbies and a group of loud voices or are we going to put people first? That's always going to be the question we have to ask ourselves. And as a Democrat, we will always put the safety of people first. Going back to your legislation, what's next for the Gun Violence Prevention Research Act? Um, so we do have some co-sponsors already, and we're just going to continue to try to build on it. We're going to talk about it in the press. We're going to make sure it's part of our platform as we go into the next election cycle. But again, listening to the people, this has widespread support. It is not just a partisan issue. But I think the question is, are the Republicans going to have the courage to step up and do what they know is the right thing? 
I mean, you talk about public safety all the time, and this is one way to improve safety and to reduce the number of mass shootings and just to keep our communities more safe. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, that this legislation was signed into law tomorrow. How fast would it take to implement it and how long would that research take? Well, I mean, the good news is that this has a substantive amount of funding to go with it. And so the CDC can employ large numbers of people and really get to research right away. And in the meantime, as legislators, we will continue to try and pass the laws that haven't gotten past the Senate. But I think it's something that doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens concurrently. We are discussing gun violence. We're doing what we can to get, you know, illegal guns off the streets. We're trying to pass laws, and at the same time, the CDC will do its research. So it's not an either or, it's a yes and. We continue to do this work in a very comprehensive way. Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland, I appreciate you coming on.